Hi everyone. Today I'm making this video to show you how I fixed my Fisher & Piker washing machine, which was showing the error code 130. Uh, this washing machine has a model number of MW511, and this is basically how I fixed it. So, first thing I want to say is I'm not a professional washing machine fixer, so I may have done some things wrong, but it worked for me in the end. So this is what I did basically. So firstly I just want to show you what the washing machine was doing with a 130 error code. So pretty much I'd put my clothes in the washing machine, turn it on, start the wash, and it sounded normal enough. But if you look in here, normally this centre bit is rotating at this point. Um, the water's coming in okay. Sometimes this water would come in sort of intermittently, but at the moment it's fairly continuous. Um, so it would do this for a while until eventually it would stop and start beeping. So it usually happens a bit quicker if I just turn this. So now it's beeping with the error code displayed across here. So as you can see the first light is on and the second to last light is on. So what I learned from Google pretty much is these eight lights represent like the eight digits of a binary code. So any light that's on represents a one and any light that's off represents a zero. So what this is telling me is this is a binary code number of one zero 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 one zero. Um, so to decipher that binary code into a normal numerical number um, basically you go from right to left and you just start with one and keep doubling that value as you go across so basically this light means one this light is two this light is four this light is eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one hundred and twenty eight so only the number two light and the number 128 light are illuminated. So 128 plus 2 is 130. So that's how you get the 130 error code off these lights that are on. So obviously the first thing anyone does when they get a problem like this is you Google it. So this is what I found on Google. So pretty much for my adventures on Google, um, I managed to find a piece of the manual for this washing machine which had an expl explanation of the um, error 130. So error 130 or in binary 1000010 it says it's a phase 1 to 6 single rotor position sensor error. Um, I don't really know what this means either. But it has an explanation underneath this. The motor controller has found an error in the pattern received from the rotor position sensor. Likely causes of this fault are a bad connection on the harness between the rotor position sensor and the motor controller, or a faulty rotor position sensor. The primary source is the wiring, and the actions it recommends is check for corrosion on the edge connector of the rotor position sensor and the motor controller module connector. Check the contacts on the rotor positional sensor end of the hall harness to see if any have been damaged. Each set of contacts in the socket has two wipers. If the distance between these wipers varies between contacts, replace the rotor positional sensor harness. So the first thing I obviously had to do was just take it to bits and see what was wrong with it. So this is what I did. So the first thing you need to do is just turn off the taps. Uh, disconnect all these hoses. Uh, take your drain hose out. Uh, turn the power off and unplug the power. So now I just pull the washing machine out. 
and I think it's best to lay it down on its front, made it the easiest to work on. So I lay the washing machine down on its front like so. And that makes it easy to access the motor from underneath. So this is what the underneath of the washing machine looks like. Um, here you can see this thing here is the rotor. It just has magnets in it, it spins around. Um, you can see this wiring harness here connects to the position sensor here, which is attached to the stator and behind this stuff. So I'll show you now how to disassemble this piece. So the first thing we have to do is we need to take off this big plastic rotor. So there's just a big plastic nut sort of thing on the end which is threaded onto a shaft which runs down the middle of the washing machine. So this may be a bit tight so I used a um, pair of I don't know what you call these things but grips I guess to undo this bolt um, but sometimes it's easy enough just to do with your hand so you just wind this off for quite a while until eventually the rotor just comes off and then underneath we have the shaft here and this here is the stator of the motor. So that's the bit which stays still while the rotor spins around it. Um, in behind here is the rotor position sensor, which senses at which position the rotor is relative to the stator, which is important for the running of the motor. Basically it won't run if it doesn't get a signal from this um, position sensor. So the next thing we have to do is there's four bolts which hold the stator in place which need to be removed um, for the stator to come out and the stator has to come out to get this position sensor off so this is how I did that uh, so I used a socket set and a um, 3 8 socket to remove this so, just loosen all the bolts. So once those four bolts have been removed, um, you basically just unhook the wires from this little red clip at the top here so that you can pull the whole stator out. So it just pulls off quite easily. With a set of washers that sit either side of it, which it might be easiest to remove. So with the stator off, we can now see the rotor position sensor in behind here. It just clips on through one little clip, which is just goes between the two coils here like that. Um, so you can see there's a wiring harness which plugs into the back of the sensor. So on the explanation on Google they said the contacts of this could possibly be corroded. So um, a good thing to do is first is um, just to pull this wiring harness off the back. Sorry it might be hard to see. And just check the wee contacts in there just to see if there's any corrosion or anything which might be stopping the signal getting to the control board. So the contacts on my one all look pretty good so I didn't really suspect that that was the problem. So the next thing I thought I'd do was just remove this position sensor from the stator. So basically to do that I just sort of slide it back as far as I can and this little clip here you might need to um, just push it up with a screwdriver or something 
just to get that out of the way. But basically, once you get that clip, that's the only thing holding it. It just slides off out the back, like so. So just disconnect that wiring thing as we did earlier. So I just thought I'd check this out a wee bit. And it's probably pretty hard to see, but it looks like the sensors across here are quite water damaged. So in my case, I think the sensor itself is just damaged and needs to be replaced. So the next thing I did is I jumped online and I found a website that sells Fisher & Paykel spare parts. I typed in my washing machine's model number and it um, looked for a new rotor position sensor. So this is the one I found which worked for my washing machine. It's part number 420296P. Um, so basically it just came in this wee box and here's the new rotor position sensor which looks to be in a lot better condition than the one I just took off so I'll reinstall that one back onto my stator so all, all you really have to do is get this long bit and find where the wee notches on the front of the stator and just push it through make sure the green bit goes underneath the wee white plastic bits on the coils and just gently push it in until it that little clip's holding it in place. Then just get your wiring harness, thread it through these little holders, and clip it in onto the back. And just make sure that's all tight. And then all you really have to do is just the reverse of disassembling it really. So, I'll just make sure these little steel washers are back in place. Put the one on the back, and this one on the front. And then, just place the stator back on. So after a wee bit of wrestling with it, I managed to get this back sitting on where it's supposed to be. So then I just hook these wires on back onto this wee red clip. And then it's just a matter of putting the bolts back in. Which is pretty straightforward. So now I've put all the bolts back in. Uh, just make sure not to do them up too tight because it's all very plasticky in behind there. And I've it's probably pretty easy to like strip the threads or something. So then you just have to reinstall the rotor, which is pretty easy. Just slide it back over that shaft and wind up the plastic nut until it becomes tight. I don't think you have to do this up too tight, I just, just sort of firm and then that's all back together. Uh, so once you've reinstalled the rotor, all you really have to do is put the washing machine back upright, reinstall all the hoses, plug it back in and it should go, hopefully. So now the washing machine's all back together and it's time to give it its first test run. So as we can see now we've got a bit better result, the bit in the middle is spinning, which means it's fixed pretty much. 
So one thing to keep in mind is um, wherever you choose to do this repair, you're probably going to end up with a lot of water on the ground. It doesn't really matter so much for me in my garage, but um, if you're in a laundry or something, it might get pretty annoying. Yeah, so that's how I fixed my Fisher & Piker washing machine with the error code 130. Thanks for watching and I hope it helped. See you.